Good morning, church family. Welcome back to our journey through John. Uh, if you would, uh, we're going to read today from John chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses 14 through 18. Uh, so if you have access to a Bible, go ahead and turn in your Bible to John chapter 1. Uh, if you're not able to do that, I want to encourage you to listen along with us as we read God's Word together. Uh, John chapter 1, starting in verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about Him and cried out, This is He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because He was before me. For from His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only God who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. Uh, this is a passage that's just full of deep theological meaning and insight. It's, it's been used to talk about who Jesus is in so many ways. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, but there's one verse that I really want to focus on today and look at uh, very specifically because it says something that uh, is just kind of this unshakable, unalterable fact. But the fact is that the coming of Jesus alters this fact radically. And so that's verse 18. And verse 18 starts this way, no one has ever seen God. Um, if you look back over the history of the Bible, uh, we look at people like Moses and Abraham, Isaac, uh, Isaiah and um, Enoch, David and Solomon, all of these great men of God, none of them actually laid eyes on God the Father. Uh, the closest we get is that Moses talked to the Father face to face as with a friend. Um, but we, we never have an indication that Moses actually gets to see God. There's even one place uh, in the Old Testament where it talks about how he wanted to see God's glory. And God said, look, you can't see that, but what I'll do is I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock uh, with my hand over you, and you'll get to see my back. And, and so that's as close as we get in the Old Testament. Um, but then John goes on to explain how Jesus alters this fact and, and changes kind of the way we get to interact with the Father. Uh, he says in the second part of verse 18, the only God who is at the Father's side, He has made Him known. And the way I want to kind of explain what that means is that, that Jesus Himself has made God the Father, the invisible God, visible for us. And so how does He do this? Well, by analogy, let's think about it this way. Um, if you were to meet my oldest son, and get a good look at him, and then see a picture of me side by side as far as the way I looked in high school, um, you would see two people that look a lot alike. In fact, uh, you could say uh, that if somebody had seen my son, they'd seen what I looked like uh, at one point in my life. And in the same way, we have the Bible kind of talking about uh, the fact that Jesus bears uh, witness, bears the likeness of the image of the Father. Uh, the author of Hebrews puts it this way, Jesus is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of His nature. Paul says it this way in Colossians, He is the image of the invisible God. And what they mean by this is not that uh, when we look at the physical features of Jesus, uh, we get to see what the physical features of God the Father are going to be. Um, in fact, um, there's a reason that we never really get a detailed description of Jesus, I think, and it's for this very reason, that we don't make the mistake of thinking, well, when we look at Jesus in His physical form, we see God the Father. What we see is God the Father's heart. We see God the Father's will for us, His desires for us. Um, we see things like... Um, we, we know what God the Father really is all about, what He cares about, what He would do, and, and we can do all that by looking at Jesus. And this is the very reason that the Word became flesh, so that we could receive grace on grace and see that God the Father really is a God of grace. So let's uh, give thanks today uh, for the gift of God's, the fullness of that grace that we get through Jesus and the fact that when we look at Jesus, we can know that that's God the Father. Let's pray together. Uh, Father, we thank you so much that Jesus is the exact representation of your heart. He is the exact imprint of your nature. 
Um, and so when we look at Jesus, and as we see him in the Gospels, as we uh, experience him day to day in our lives, uh, we know that we are getting a glimpse of you, of your heart, of your desires for us. And so thank you, God, for revealing yourself through your son. We pray, Lord, that we would always remember that if we're ever questioning how you feel about us, uh, what you think about us, we would just remember who Jesus is and what he has done for us, and that will remind us of who you are. We thank you uh, that that's true, and we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.